hello and welcome to the Niels Forre Design channel again. Today a video on the ideation sketches of our Brad Van Hommage. We've done a video on the side views so far of the ideation phase. Today we'll start actually turning around the sketches and showing you what we've done, which choices we made and what is important about throwing these sketches around so you can see them from different viewpoints. Please do have a look at the previous videos on our Brad Van Hommage design process if you haven't done so before. So without further ado, let's get started with this three-dimensional ideation sketch. You can see it's rough, it's handmade, it's a simple black big pen with a simple white A4 sheet of paper. And these have been scanned, uh, thrown into Photoshop just to give them a bit of color so the three-dimensionality can be quickly added if you like the colors the materials the shadows the highlights the wheels graphic like the windows can be colored in very quickly and efficiently car design is not about making pretty sketches it's about getting an image to the client or the board of directors of your car manufacturer as soon as possible making efficient use of time is a very important part of that so hence these are simple sketches made with pen and paper thrown into photoshop to color them in so let's have a look at what we actually see. We have this straight up rear end, which really goes from top to bottom, super, super flat and super straight. Meaning it's not curved into this direction. So with a rake basically like that, and it's not curved forwards with a rake that way. This is a straight rear end with around it a nice facet here, all around the entire graphic element of the rear end. And within there are the tail lights situated. We've got this nice bumper like appearance here of the surfacing obviously this is a completely clear and clean rear end with other words there are no shut lines normally there would be likely a shut line somewhere here running around the rear end like that going inside obviously because it's a deeper area then you've got the tail lights which won't be part of the bumper so this would normally be a bumper made out of plastic in this case we don't need that, we don't want it even, because it's an extra shut line and it basically is something we want to prevent as car designers from happening. Imagine a line that cuts right through the most beautiful sculptures made by Michelangelo. Car designers see their work the same. If there's a line running through it, usually it's just ruining the surface, ruining that beautiful sculpture. In this case, it's not a mass-produced car. It's not a car that will be used for uh, the grocery run. So it's very unlikely to sustain damage from the rear. So we make this beautiful sculpted rear end, which really from the rear of the front door all the way towards the back is one sculpted piece of car design. Then zooming out a little bit, overseeing the entire car, we see this wraparound window in the front, a B pillar being created, this width being created by a vertical air vent, exactly running into the same direction parallel to the window. Lovely shadows here, so it's a very three-dimensional piece of sculpture. There's a facet running around the roof there. All these things start suddenly working together because this is a three-dimensional sketch. You see how this is then wrapping around there to the top, making sure that the facet at the end there is very obvious. The rake or angle of the air vents here in the front is then carried over towards the back there where they are enlarged and very sculptural. You can see the front of the two is slightly larger and is reaching over towards the smaller one over there. The surface would basically flow like this. This is the main direction of the surface. Then it would go in. From there, it would go out again towards this point, meaning that that line and that line are on the same surface, the same outer surface area, one could say. Then it goes in again. This will be a mesh grill here as well, obviously. And this is a lovely three dimensional shadow, similar in its shape as the highlight here. So rounded edges, not pointy, but rounded, very three dimensional again. And a similar treatment of the surface can be found here in front, where this second vent has a surface that runs all over the door, creating again this very three-dimensional sculpture, a very interesting way of adding new character to the car, we believe. 
And this is actually something that we have carried forward in the final car. So you see where these ideas start. They really start in the ideation sketches. Let's move on to the second one where we see a three quarter front end and original headlights here. Very early on in the design process, it became apparent, it became clear that carrying over these standard headlights of the base vehicle would probably not be a wise choice. You will see every single panel in this sketch has been redone. It has a new fender, new bonnets, because normally there would be an air intake more or less there. This would be closed. The two graphics here in front wouldn't be there. The entire front bumper area is different. These fans are different. The light catcher here is different. And then obviously the entire rear end and the way the windscreen wraps around is different. So this is basically a full redesign of the base vehicle with the exception of these headlight graphics. And you see that these headlights are so iconic, so unique, so recognizable, that it's just not wise to use them. It proves how hard it is to give a base car a new character when we have these very strong and very identifiable elements carried over. Because designing new headlights is quite a costly undertaking, we made quite a few sketches using the original base car headlights to see what we could do with the sculpture of the car, with the surfacing, with the proportions to try to make it look like a different car. In the end, it was decided to drop the original headlights and to develop bespoke headlights for this very motor car just because it was super clear that we couldn't do anything with these standard headlights. This sketch with this full glass rear end, a very interesting sketch, I think, and a very interesting graphic to that rear end. And you see, it's not just a flat piece of glass. You can see it runs fairly straight there, but then where these two large double exhaust pipes are protruding through the body, you see highlights here in the glass, but the entire glass surface actually comes forward. So you have this lovely shine to it, this area here already comes towards the front. Then underneath these pipes, you see again, very three-dimensional sculpture. I highlight over there, one over there, and these are a bit more pointy, but still rather sculptural. And it is a direct match with all the surface treatments around the car. You can see as well that the air vents on this specific car are a bit rougher. Instead of having a double air vent on the fender and on the side and here on the rear fender, you will see one very large, very sculptural again, and very deep single air vent. This would be the element that would actually vent the air out. And then this here is a very large shadow that runs across the door and a very similar treatment there. You would basically read it like this. Definitely an interesting take as a whole, so not just that the glass rear end, but also the sculptural way of integrating these four tips and obviously these very unique graphics there. Nevertheless, an idea we ditched because it was way too far away from what is a real bread van. Here you see one of the first sketches that was a tryout with these new, more slim headlights. What you see happening is a very large amount of surface area that we can suddenly use to redesign a completely new bonnet, which has plenty of space to not just have these large intakes there, but also to do something very interesting with the surfacing. So let's zoom in and see. And again, this is a rough ideation sketch. So you can see lines here that are rough, that are not entirely balanced out yet, perhaps. You can see me searching to the right direction, if you like, uh, the right line on the right place. And this is really why these radiation sketches are made. They're not made to be pretty necessarily. They're really this rough search to nice, interesting volumes, new shapes, new ways of solving certain areas in a car. So let's get back and look at what we actually see. There's this facet running around what is an opening here. This opening inside has the actual vent. So this area is the vent area. Then here we've got this large surface area, which will be a shadowy side. The light coming from that side and falling on the surface over there. So that will be the direction of the light, which means every surface facing that direction will be a highlight. 
every surface not facing that direction will be a shadow side, like you see here. We've got the nose in a slightly shark nose kind of surfacing treatment there where everything is leading towards that edge. Also this air vent on the top, which is basically see-through. So you can see the top end of that lovely V12 engine. And then there's a surface here again, all pointing forwards. And then this surface has this lovely focus towards the headlights, connecting all the different graphical elements, the intake, the headlight, another intake, in sculpture, in three-dimensionality. You see the same happening here, where the outside of that graphic runs through into this graphic, which is the inside of, again, a larger graphic there, with its own facets to catch the light, and again, a very three-dimensional way of solving the design of a front end. These graphics there, air intakes, are a link to important race cars from the 60s, where you would see these graphics as well, but obviously, this is way more styled. So back in the days, that was purely functionality. They would go, for instance, to the brakes. So air coming in here would go through pipes towards the brakes, the brake discs in the front. In this case, the same could be happening, but this is obviously way more sculpted, way more integrated. These original cars were rather butchered together, if I may say so, and that's not the case here. Another sketch with these large headlights there in the front and again, you see, despite the fact it's a completely different design compared to this car here, they are just too easy to recognize and bespoke headlights are really a must. What you can see though, is that these new graphics that we're continuously searching for, so for instance, these two, the nostrils in the front, they are softer compared to the version you see here which have more focus in them. These are a bit more horizontal, but again, connecting all graphics possible around the headlights, around tail lights, around vents here in the side. Yet another sketch of these original headlights. Like I said, we made quite a few of these sketches to see how we could make it work. All different perspectives, all different ideas on the same problem. This sketch here has a very deep rear window, making the entire rear end and the entire volume appear taller, perhaps a bit heavier as well. And not just heavier, but top heavy. This large graphic there and the small amount of metal in the bottom really makes the design lack a bit of balance. So not necessarily a very pretty design this, apart from the fact that it's slightly unbalanced. It's also a bit stiff. It's rather up straight. The graphics here on the rear fender and here on the front fender and door, they don't connect anymore. These two are visually connected to that, and one could almost read them as a fade out of the graphic of the side window. So that graphic there is basically fading out towards that direction. Quite an interesting take. However, the downside is that we have this very large surface area here that is entirely closed, entirely flat, without any sculpture. And that is in real life not overly pleasant to look at. An important sketch though, because just seeing it all together and more importantly seeing it not work is important in the creative process. Some things work, some things don't work, and if they don't work, you kill them. This sketch is a whole lot nicer. Why is that? Well, it's because the visual volume of the glass versus body area is very different compared to that previous sketch, specifically because it runs basically not just up until the highlight there, but it runs a lot deeper. So it's 50-50 here, which is more balanced than the previous sketch. But it's not just that, it's also the graphics that are interconnecting. So despite the fact that the rear end is here and it's very, very defined, obviously, because of that facet, and the side is also very defined, again, because it just stops at the facet, the design in itself is more three-dimensional because the graphics, the bottom here of the window and the top end of that vent, they interconnect and they go exactly through the middle of these two tail lights. The same is true for this lovely, very rich highlight there, which you will see standing next to the car and it will connect to that surface there. The fact that the rear end is so lovely connected doesn't mean that this is a perfect sketch. It is very, very clean. That's great. However, the side being so flat without any intakes, without any graphical elements, 
maybe looks nice in the sketch but likely in real life in the real car when that is a very big surface area specifically again standing next to the car looking at the car looking at the roof which is flat and completely closed and then looking at that surface here which is flat and closed without any graphics without any glass inside that's not going to work well it's going to be basically looking like a van which already the car does a bit of course but we're trying to make it a bit less slap sided a bit less like a cardboard box and way more sculpted more interesting to look at it has to be a pretty car in the end thanks for watching this video on the selection of the ideation sketches of our brad van homage please like the video leave a comment and subscribe to the niels Faroy design channel and do join us again next week for a new car design for coach building video.